Good morning. This is Trent Goodmanson. I am here by my house, actually. I'm going to paint the scene here in front of me. The neighbor's cows under this beautiful tree. It's very uh, a unique tree, I think. It's got some personality. Got kind of a strange shaped canvas. Uh, it's an 8x16. I think. <laughs> Something like that. Actually, I don't think it's 8 by 16 now that I look at it. Um, so I'll get started. Today I'm going to go with a light purple for the, the block in. On trees, whenever I can get something a little bit unique about it, and kind of emphasize that, I think it makes it more interesting. So this tree kind of leans to the right. I'll hold this so you can see it. Kind of goes in on this side and leans over on this one. Alright, I can already tell that I like that composition. So... Let me get right to work putting the colors in. Mostly just mixing the green and the purple for this shadow. I'm leaving some of these accents in there so they appear to be warmer. I like mistakes. I like leaving the, the off colors in there most of the time. Because it seems to add a little bit more. Um, adds more to the painting. Oh, kind of like maybe uh, in music, if you have an, a note that you know is not necessarily out of key, but it's um, it's unexpected. It uh, kind of makes it more interesting. Yeah, I definitely don't want out of key. <laughs> and there's a color key too. I'm going with green and brown, burnt sienna, and phthalo, <clears throat> phthalo green for the tree. I can see more, more warmth. 
in that, and yet it's also the darkest part of the scene. Letting some of my purple bleed into there along the top. It's kind of misty. Everything is full of dew this morning. Just gorgeous. I've discovered that I really, well, I, I've kind of known, always known this, but I often forget to and try to force myself out of my, out of my zone. But I've always known that I am good at and uh, really enjoy painting quickly. I don't know why, I, I, it just seems to come more naturally to me than slowing down and taking things slow and deliberate. Perhaps it's because I let myself overthink things sometimes. Okay, I'll, I'll fix those edges. There's really some nice purple going on. That's probably too light, but maybe I'll leave it just as a reminder of what I can do there. Okay, all right, now I'm gonna take some yellow, this CAD yellow light, and my burnt sienna. See if I can approximate, I need more white. Approximate the, the color of the, the light over here. I've got to capture this very quickly because in morning light like this I've only got 20 minutes or so before it's changed so much that I really can't do much with it with the scene. Give it just some little sp spots to give maybe the impression of of what kind of the tree this is, and most of that should be in the shape of the tree. But I like being able to show that it's just a little bit show just a little bit of the detail of the leaves, but in a really impressionistic way still. yellowish white in, in here. Although I like that deep yellow. Just kind of drag that around a little bit. All right, that gives the feeling that I'm going for, the feeling of that tree. Those cows may or may not end up in this painting after all. That's okay. I'll paint it as a, it's just a landscape. And if I can, put them in afterwards, then that will be a bonus. And they'll just be part of the landscape instead of as, as important elements. They'll be important because they add, they'll add life to the painting. And so it'll be nice to get them in there. But I'm gonna paint this so that, in such a way that they're not necessary to the, to the scene. Yeah, I'm really just putting colors in, obviously, but I'm not really painting things. I'm painting shapes instead, just abstract qualities of the landscape. And amazingly, when you put, I mean, it makes, it's obvious, but, but sometimes it's not so obvious, I suppose. But painting is nothing more than just putting the right colors and values together. 
the right shapes. Add a little bit of blue to that. Indicate the road. Uh, I kind of like the purple better. The blue seems a little foreign. I found more and more that I don't really use the blue. Not much anyway. As it's really easy to let blue be the go-to color in a, in a landscape and to overuse it. Same with green, but... <laughs> so I guess just, um, you know, use whatever color you want if you're a painter. But just be aware that those colors can take advantage of you instead of the other way around. purple into that color that I had over here to make a little bit of a, a half tone. All right. Now at this stage of the painting, I should be able to see if, if I'm going to like it or not. I can already tell that I, that I like it. That's, it's going to turn out. Alright, I need to get the, the color of the, the grass in the foreground in there. I'm just going to estimate a nice green color, kind of limey. It's not nearly as yellow as the green in the tree. You can see it better probably when it was out of focus. So the light parts in the grass are almost always going to be, or I, I should say in the ground, are almost, al almost always going to be lighter than the lightest parts in the, in the upright um, parts of the painting, the upright planes, if you will. So the things that are sticking up this way are always going to be darker than anything that's this way. So if you notice the, the really dark, dark in the, in the grass here, it's not as dark as the, and it, especially if you squint at it. I'm not talking about the small, small dots of things, but but it is not as dark as anything in the in the tree, uh, especially the trunk. Um, sometimes it'll try to fool you, but kind of need to keep those separate because you can fool fool it right back. Okay, I'm just gonna. Continue to mix these colors, put it in there. I like to not go in and uh, you know before a painting is started and, and make a giant blob of color. I like to mix it on the fly, so to speak, as I'm going along. Partially because I don't want to waste precious time trying to think about each of those colors ahead of time, when I'm just going to have to think about it again when I put it there, when I put it down. But Also, I like that I can mix just a little tiny bit of color put it on the canvas, and then if I need more, I, uh, I'll get more and it'll, it'll mix with what's already there. And I like the, the qualities of the, of the paint when that happens.
And I was just talking about the, the darks in the ground plan not being as dark as there. And uh, I need to change these ones. Just a little bit of white into that. I don't know, when in doubt as to how light or dark something is or what the color is, just just paint what you see, but double check to make sure you're really seeing what you think you're seeing there. Because is if you look too closely at something, at any object in the painting, you're going to be fooled into thinking that, that that's what the color is, or that's what the value is. But really, all colors and values, everything, every aspect of a, of a scene is determined more by what it's, what's around it than by the the actual color of the thing. If I were to look too closely at that tree, I would just see the green and miss the purple entirely. I have to kind of almost blur my vision or look past it, past the whole scene, or focus in front of it. Whether literally or, or just in my mind. So that I can see the whole thing and how it all interacts and ties together. Pause for a second while I wash my brush. Yeah, I've got a wash brush, but I didn't wash my palette because I've still got room on here and I might need to use these, or I, I can use those colors and I might as well not waste. So those colors that show up in a painting in any given place are usually going to show up in some degree in another place. I'm using just, well, I'll go ahead and put white there. Just pure white. Kind of as a reference to myself more than anything. To remind myself how, how far I can go if I need to. And also to remind myself that I <laughs> you know, don't want to go that far if, uh, if I don't need to. I don't know if that made sense, but basically just, just a point of reference. that same color. I'm not thinning it, you might notice. I, I don't know why, I just, I usually enjoy painting the full, full strength, full thickness of paint. And if you need it thinner, just spread it around. I, I, you know, sometimes I do thin it, for sure, but But not as a rule, definitely. It looks like a nice morning sky. Just the, just the blue and white tends to, seems to work in this case. You know, whenever I start thinking that I, I know something about the landscape, in other words, <laughs> when I think that I know what color a sky will be at a certain time of day, I'm always, proven to be misinformed. You know, you can definitely learn something about the 
landscape and how colors act in certain instances. But that can be a dangerous way of thinking because you really want to just follow what the landscape is in front of you is is showing you and telling you. I'm gonna halfway wipe off my brush. I'm gonna wipe it dry but not not totally clean it. I get just a tiny bit of yellow in there. To be white. Mostly white. A tiny bit of yellow. The sky still has just a just a touch of of yellow in it. And it's just fading into blue as it goes up. That part can be different. That's kind of a more intense yellow. Well, you know what? Now that is interesting. So I'm looking at the scene, trying to decide what's the lightest light, and where I have, where I happen to be zoomed in, it appears to be that. You know, this um, kind of foggy area of the mountain is lighter than than this area. It might be hard to see on screen. Um, also, that's a small spot, so it'll have a tendency to be influenced by the, the darkness of the tree around it. But um, ah, it's just something to be for me to be aware of as I as I continue this painting. Uh, maybe I'll want to paint that slightly lighter than than the other areas. You know, when painting the the holes that you see, you know, where you see the objects behind trees, particularly bright objects, well, any, any object, I suppose, doesn't matter whether it's bright or or darker. Um, depending on the size of those holes, they'll be more... they'll be influenced by the color of the tree itself. It's getting more of that color. There are some trees on the horizon down there. I'm, I'm sort of at the moment letting all the, these background elements sort of run together a little bit. And it is sort of foggy and you know, undefined back there. I may want to put more definition in it a little later, but for the moment, I think it can be that that undefined. Quickly do a little sketch where I want these elements. I'm not painting it maybe exactly the way I see it, but. Let's see. I think that's a good balance though. Let's see, maybe I'll kind of frame the scene with some trees right there. I'm not sure if it needs it though. Also this phone pole. Phone pole. Might be a nice addition. I don't know, sometimes phone poles are just ugly. Sometimes they really add something to the scene though. Alright. I may need to wash my brush again. Let's see if I can get a pure enough color without doing that. This is for the mountains. Light purple. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of 
thinner. Just feels right in this instance. I can get slightly sharper lines when I've used, when I've thinned the paint down just a little bit. And it just seems to be the effect that I want on this part. There's some snow covered uh, tops of the mountains up there. Snow is easy to, distant snow is easy to get too light. So just always compare. See, I'm letting these colors in the trees blend together. Now I could mix a darker color, and that would probably work as well. So I'm mixing the kind of the the color of the of the elements in the background, mixing them with the color of the tree because they again they influence each other, and you know, the darkness of the tree makes the those holes where you see through to the sky you know those parts of the sky are, are darker more the color of the tree than than out in the open where the sky is not influenced by anything except itself it's looking pretty good Definitely gets lighter as it, as it goes down. I'm just allowing to pick up some of this this orangey color. That fog in the distance um, looks like it's kind of that color. Too light, I have to change that. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Um, so I started saying oh, I'm gonna allow the the colors that are on the brush to to come through a little bit here. You know, I'm, I'm controlling the accidents. Here, I'm just mixing more of that color with white and allowing the blue on my, my brush to continue to, to be there. So I'll allow little accidents like that to happen. You know, the, the colors that are on my brush already to to mix with the color that I really want. And I'll kind of, I'll just see, just see if I like it. And if I don't like it, I will change it. Or, you know, I'll kind of change it a little bit or I'll start over if I don't like it at all. sure how much I like what's going on there. Also I need to do some some more detail work along the the horizon area. Particularly right around the trees. So I'm gonna change this to be a little lighter than that, but green rather than that orange. To show that it's sort of a different element. Looks like I need to 
modify the the transitional area there. I've got the dark shadow, the purpley shadow, and then I've now put that green in, so now I have to put something that's kind of halfway in between. I don't mind some of that orange th showing through, but just maybe not as much as, as what I had. I think that needs to be more yellow though. Yeah, that, that works for me for now. Same thing over here. Started up the sprinklers on the or the motor on the wheel line back in the field behind me. So I want to continue this horizon line across, even though I can't really see it um, in this area. But I want to make sure that the scene isn't confusing to whoever sees it. a slightly lighter color for that very top edge of the, the horizon where it stops in front of those barns. A lot of times these little tiny places of, of color are more important than the big areas. You know, these are the spots that give a scene the impression of having detail without actually having to paint detail. the edges of things and you know, where one element where this road for example meets the stuff in front of it and the, the weeds in front of it and the weeds behind it that's where I can really that's the only place where I can really explain what what it really is and how and what shape those things are the The edge is the first thing that we look at when we recognize um, what something is. to the background again. I haven't stayed totally accurate to what's going on back there. Um, you know, this, this area, you can see that I only have a tiny bit of <clears throat> the actual background showing. Um, I'm okay with that. 
I've emphasized how far this drops down. But I like that that t tree is tilted. Um, it's I sort of just caricatured, you know, over, been overly dramatic in how I represent that tree. And I think it makes it interesting. Go ahead and just put a few shadows over here. There are all kinds of elements back here that I can I can put in, I can borrow from one, one part of the scene and uh, put it in put it in another. I turn that into a tree. There are trees over here and I like the way they frame the scene. I like that they give some reason for these other shadows to be there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that shadow more, more obvious. Or I guess just bigger. My hands are cold. It's a cold morning. Unusual for June. I know that's going to be too dark already. So I'm going to just mix this in with that color that I was using. Ah, uh, that's. I'm going to be cutting it close. Get a little too light, uh, a little too dark, so I'm going to lighten it. I just put the color down and see if it needs to change. It's really impossible to tell if it needs to change before I put it on the canvas and compare it to what's there. colors from other other spots. There's some bales of hay back there. So I'm gonna try to indicate that that, that there might be hay. Or that there might be something, <laughs> some object that is standing up and, and getting light on it. Shouldn't matter too much what it actually is as much as just something, you know, it's something. Do I want to leave that a sharp line? Yeah, I think I'll soften it up here, but I'll leave that alone. Now the light has changed pretty dramatically already, so I don't want to be too, too influenced by things that have that have changed. I'm gonna soften this edge though.
to show that the light is wrapping around. I'll show how wispy the those edges are. Changed the shape a little bit, you saw that. Just kind of looking at it as a whole, as a whole painting for a moment to see what I really need. Alright, I need to wash my brush again. I've also gone and, and cleaned off my palette, scraped it and wiped it. I need, I need a clean spot to work. I'll try to get the that color there. It's, it's snow, but very far in the distance. You can see that it's Kind of more the color of the sky, you know, whereas the mountains are purple. You can see that fog down there is kind of that orangey tone, just a little bit. Um, so the snow is kind of the color of the sky, as opposed to the purpley color of the mountains, but it's very close in value to the mountains. So I'll just yeah, there, there are a few. Sp there are a few spots that have the snow. It's more subtle than what I'm than the way I'm painting it right here. That means I need to darken it just a little bit, get closer to the color, to the value of the mountains. And that's too dark. A little bit of white. Let's see if I can just mix those on the painting. I'll go back in and in just a minute and fix those. Not sure if you can even see that. It's pretty subtle. Actually I think that's a little too subtle still. It's starting to disappear. And if this were an area of a lot of pollution, then that might be appropriate, but... But luckily the, the air is still very clean here in southern Idaho. Hope that never changes. Got some chattery birds this morning, don't we? Sticking with that same color there, just trying to get it to be the right tone, right value. Mixing purple into that to kind of redo the the mountain area below that. Don't want it to all look like snow, otherwise the snow won't look like snow. There'll be nothing to compare it to. Blue. 
blue and purple. And I just use my finger and mix those together. Oops. All right, there are just a couple spots of the actual white snow. I'm not going to paint it pure white because every white has some color. boring to just paint it white. Not just boring, but it's inaccurate. But it is very, very, very close to white. I try very hard not to go spot, you know, so I don't push my brush ever. I try to make every single thing a stroke. Because the smallest spot, the smallest highlight still has a shape to it. Correct that edge, the bottom edge there. Just wiping my finger on the paper towel. And right here as well. Let's see. A little too light. So I'm just gonna, gonna keep that color on there. Soften the edges a little bit. Doesn't have to be a real, doesn't have to stand out a lot. Sounds like my kids are waking up. <laughs> Hi, Emmy. <laughs> She's looking at me out the window. All right, if I had to stop right now, what would it need most? I guess that's always the question. You just paint the thing that's most important to change. The thing that most needs to change. shape is the right value. It's plenty dark. But these edges are just a little too sharp for for the soft wispy tree that it's representing. Alright, that's that's much better. 
I like this color. It seems to be the same color of the light on this distant tree. And these bristle brushes are great for indicating texture. And I love it when I can get the right texture with just a single stroke. It's kind of fun. I'm going to go ahead and show that this is, is different just with a different direction of brush stroke. Okay, I'm just sizing up the whole thing here, seeing if, if it's accurate. I'm going to just look at it for just a minute. Alright. A couple things I've thought about. I'm not sure that I like how close in value this is uh, to that. Huh. I almost feel like that shouldn't shouldn't be that color. Or maybe it's just that it's too something too sharp, maybe. Maybe it just stands out because of that. And then the other thing is just simply that I still need to paint the the trunk and the branches of the tree. So let me wipe off the brush just a little bit. Purple and brown looks like it might get the right color for me because I for no other reason than, the, than that I can see purple and brown in there. <laughs> it's kind of purple and it's kind of brown. But more purple and a tiny bit lighter. Just a, just a hair. Branches can be hard to do. But mostly if you just make sure and make them taper the right way, you'll be in good shape. As long as they get smaller as they as they go, so I twist my brush. I've got a darker color on that side, and then I've already got a lighter color on that side. So where I need a lighter color, I'll switch back and forth. Get more. I'm taking cues from the trees, from the tree. Um, not necessarily to trying to be 100% accurate. It's not necessarily a portrait. Well, it is a portrait of the tree, but it's a caricature. I'm not being 100% accurate. It's not photorealism by any means at all. At all. 
but it is um, representation of the personality of this tree. The personality being the shape of it, how it, how it's growing, how it has maybe been affected by the wind and weather and whatever. You know, it's the shape of a tree. Is uh, shows its history, shows what it's been through. And then the branches, of course, need to line up with the the parts of the tree that are you know, I mean there needs to be a branch going to this tuft of of leaves and to that one and needs, that one needs to connect with it's connect a little bit better um, you know it just needs to needs to work physically perhaps paint with my fingers too much. It's probably not good to be touching this cadmium. That may be all I need to do. Doesn't doesn't need much. I'll maybe just go with a little bit more brown. A few spots here. That one actually needs, needs blue. You know, if anything stands out as wrong, just change it. Easier said than done, <laughs> I know. All right, that fence is part of the personality of this scene. I go with a purpley shadow, but not, looks like it's a little bit more yellow, maybe, I don't know, at least in these parts. Where's that fence line going? I mean, maybe it needs to be darker after all. Hmm. Now, even though those fence posts out there are evenly spaced. I'm going to try to give each post a little bit of a unique character characteristic. You know, they're all they're all straight. They're all the same width, but that to me is very boring. I like old old fence lines. Favorite kind of fences are our old rotting cedar fences, cedar post fences. You know, where the fence has kind of fallen down over the years and so the farmer might have the farmer's gone gone in and fixed it with other size posts and sort of doubled up on others. Blue. <laughs> the blue here is 
drying out because I don't use use it very often. Try to rely on other colors instead. A few of these posts look extra blue to me, particularly in this shadow area. I don't want those posts to be to appear that they're floating, so I just ground them a little bit. Put some dark accents down there at the bottom. Where they're tucked behind some tufts of grass. <laughs> yeah, that's Looking nice. Put in a few really dark posts. I'll make that one dark. Double up on that one. highlight going across there that from the very beginning has been one of the lightest parts of the scene but hmm it's gonna be I've got one shot at it hmm will that add to the scene will it improve it or not I gotta decide now I'll go for it. Slightly dragging the brush across. Well, luckily, I think it worked out. However, this part over here would have been in shadow when I started, so. Okay, a couple more spots that need some attention, but just about done. The, these light blues back here don't don't belong. Pretty close. Just gonna look at it from a distance. There's a lot of beautiful stuff here. I love this tree too. See, this tree is the same as, as that um, in its interest. It's 
you know, it jets out really far on the left side, and then it jets out again, but not as far, a little bit higher. So that if it was the same on both sides, I don't think it would be as interesting. That's yeah, fun to paint. I like painting that tree. I also really need to paint this garden that was planted again. <laughs> need to carve out time between gardening to actually paint the garden more often. It's a little distracting. A few places down here where the canvas is showing through or the board is showing through. This really is a just a study of a tree, this whole painting. But I think part of the personality of the scene does lie in the, the stuff that's back there. So I'm gonna paint all of that a little bit be a little bit more prominent than it is now. Actually, and that'll be more accurate. Um, the stuff back there is is more part of the scene than how I've painted it. Got some different kinds of trees back there. I'm gonna paint them. You know, some are more dense than others. I kind of like that there's a, a shed back there. I don't necessarily like the design of the shed, but I like that there is one. green. Indicate the dark tree back there. Oh, is that too brown? Yeah, it needs to be. Grayer. I haven't painted it as a it as tall as as it really is, but I think that's all right. I like that there are phone poles and things back there. That part that's part of what makes a farm look like a farm. Some more subtle indications of yellow things, you know, hay and silage back there. Okay, I'm calling it. <laughs> I 
I'm just gonna get my signature brush. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you've learned something. Hope you've discovered a greater appreciation for the beautiful world around us through this experience. I hope you'll join me next time. And I hope you have a really wonderful day. Again. See ya.